Private data from an adult site is exposed. TLS 1.0 and 1.1 will be deprecated in 2020, and an IoT operating system is found vulnerable to hacks. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I am Shannon Morse, and this is ThreatWire for October 23rd, 2018. Your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. Our Patreon is over at patreon.com slash threatwire. That's always the best way to support the show. Help us reach our next goal. If you want access to exclusives, check out that link. It's below in the show notes. And special thanks to our newest Patreon supporters, Devin, Ron, Brian, Bradley, Miles Flo, John, Nick, Claudil, and Ken. And now, on to the news. According to Troy Hunt, founder of Have I Been Pwned or Owned.com, eight adult websites under this umbrella of a site called Wife Lovers had data exposed for 1.2 million users. Included in the leak are IP addresses for folks connected to the site, user passwords protected by an obsolete crypto scheme, names, and 1.2 million unique email addresses. The leak data was for free message board members, not the paid members, and as such, no credit card details were included in this breach. The owner of the adult site states that only about 100,000 people had ever posted there, and he had received a copy of the database, but he has not researched it further. The size of the database was 98 megabytes. Now, as of Saturday morning, the site has been taken offline while security upgrades are in progress. It also states that the message boards would be disabled for the time being, and that users should change their passwords anywhere that they use them. Now, in a quote for Ars Technica, the owner also also explained that they would take the site offline forever if the problem is not fixed. Now, while the amount of the breach is a far cry from the major Ashley Madison leak of 2015, if any of these email addresses or names corresponded with accounts on other sites, they could easily be found via a quick Google search to match a name to a face. Hence, blackmailing. The eight affected sites are listed below in the Ars Technica article that I linked to, and they allowed users to post adult photos of their spouses. Were they consensual? Well, we can all make an educated guess here. Hunt disclosed the leak to the site owners, and he explained on Twitter that the problem was probably due to their use of a script with a SQL injection vulnerability that was easily discoverable. He also pointed out that they used DES crypt for their passwords, which is a hash that is decades and decades old, but the passwords were not encrypted. In fact, DES crypt is so easy to break, researcher Hashcat took seven minutes to decipher a hash that Hunt just posted on Twitter. Adult site or not, since the hashing technique is deprecated, it's advisable that you change your password on any sites that share that same password usage. It's unknown if the data ever found its way into a malicious actor's hands, but it's always better to be proactive in security issues rather than reactive. It's a long time coming, but four major tech companies, Apple, Google, Microsoft, and Mozilla, have all teamed up to deprecate TLS 1.0 and TLS 1.1 by early 2020. TLS stands for Transport Layer Security. It's a protocol started in 1999, and it's used to secure connections from users on the internet. Many vulnerabilities and bugs have been found in TLS over the years, and newer versions of TLS have been released to patch the bugs. Now TLS 1.2 was introduced in 2008. The four vendors want websites to move to TLS 1.2, of which only around 1% would actually need to make that change since most sites are already up to date. Eventually, TLS 1.3 should take its place, but this newest protocol edition was not published until August of 2018, just a couple of months ago. Apple states that 99.6% of all sites currently use 1.2, while sites with TLS 1.0 and 1.1, which will be deprecated, are at 0.36% on their browser. Apple will remove 1.1 and 1.0 in March 2020 from Safari via updates to Apple iOS and macOS. Google will drop 1.0 and 1.1 support in Chrome 72, with the protocol being disabled in Chrome 81. Google currently supports older cryptographic algorithms such as RSA Key Exchange, SHA-1, and CBC Mode Cipher Suites, but all of these have vulnerabilities and all of which are not included in TLS 1.3. As such, these will also be evaluated for deprecation. Now, Microsoft mentions that they expect the IETF, which is the Internet Engineering Task Force, to actually deprecate the protocol later this year, which means that 
the support will not be available in Edge as well. And lastly, Mozilla states that Firefox will not include support for the protocol in March of 2020. Mozilla also clarifies that website owners can just upgrade to 1.3 if they want, which also makes connections faster. Security researcher Ori Carliner discovered several vulnerabilities in FreeRTOS, which is an open source, real-time operating system that's used in over 40 microcontrollers, IoT devices, aerospace, medical devices, and in the automotive industry, and even more from that. As of last year, free RTOS is managed by Amazon, and it includes over-the-air updates, code signing, AWS cloud support, and more in their version, which is called Amazon Free RTOS. Wittenstein High Integrity Systems also uses this operating system, and they maintain two variants for their own devices. The vulnerabilities expose the devices to a range of problems, and since RTOS is used for lots and lots of critical devices due to its ability to have precise timing and reliability, these vulnerabilities in particular could allow an attacker to target a device to execute malicious code, or they could take full control or leak information from the memory of the device, for example. Now in all, Carliner found 13 vulnerabilities and each of them has its own CVE associated with it. Four are remote code execution attacks, one is a DDoS vulnerability, seven are information leaks, and then another is listed as just other. They affect versions up to 10.0.1 along with AWS free RTOS versions up to 1.3.1 and all of the WHIS versions. The details of the issue were disclosed to Amazon via Zimperium and Amazon posted about it on the 17th. No technical details are currently available about any of these vulnerabilities. I have an announcement! New this week, patrons will have exclusive access to a security headline bulletin by my friend Tom Merritt. He's over at Daily Tech News Show, which you might have seen me guest host on. It's going to be an audio file, which is uploaded to the Patreon feed. So if you use the Patreon RSS to get the show in audio version, you will see it show up once a week along with my regular episodes. So this way you get more content since I can only cover a few stories each and every week. Now check out Tom's show, it's Daily Tech News show where they cover all sorts of tech news, where I guest host now and then, usually on Fridays, and consider supporting his team. It's over at patreon.com slash DTNS. I'm a supporter, I think you should be too. Patrons, make sure to share your favorite security stories in the community tab on Discord. Every Friday, I will pick three or more top stories for a voting poll so you can vote on it to be included in next week's show. Patrons also get access to a downloadable audio version of the show, including that security bulletin too from Tom. First looks at show topics, polls, discussions just for patrons, behind the scene photos, especially of my cats because I like taking pictures of my cats, and a Discord server, which is just available for patrons at $2 per month and up. So join now, get access to all of these, and help support the show. I think it's a really cool thing to do. Our next milestone goal gets you access to a live video Q&A just for patrons at all levels, and it gets us closer to doing a second episode each and every week so I can cover even more new stories. Now a big thanks to our Hush Puppy Perk Level patrons for sending in their fur baby photos. I love them. Keep them coming. They're adorable. So cute. I like the new one. That cat is adorable. Little Crowley. Now hit the subscribe button or share this episode on your favorite social media page as well. And with that, I am Shannon Morse, and I will see you next time on the internet.